I've got my lifeline in place. I have my 12 stitches. I have 12 stitches on the front needle. So I'm calling the one that's closest to me the front needle and the one that's furthest away from me the back needle. I am going to trim my yarn fairly generously. You don't need a ton of yarn, but it's nice not to run out while you're doing the Kitchener. I'm going to grab a different darning needle so I don't use the little itty bitty tiny one. I like a straight needle, um, but some people like the curved needles and either one is fine. Um, just remind you that when you do the Kitchener stitch that you're recreating a row of stitches in each of the ones on the front needle and the back needle. You're actually creating a row of stitches that joins them. And so that means that the yarn passes through each stitch two times. So you're gonna go into the stitch once and out of the stitch once essentially. And the way you do that is the way that your yarn enters the stitch from the right side or the wrong side of the fabric. If you're looking at the right side of the fabric or the wrong side. So I always think of the front as the right side of the fabric and the back needle as having the wrong side of the fabric. I'm just gonna, if the front is the right side, you knit on the right side. And if the back is the wrong side, you purl on the wrong side. So I want you to just keep that in mind because that's what I think about when I'm doing the Kitchener stitch. So you move your needles. So the stitches are on the needle tips themselves and they're being held with the cable out of the way You've got your lifeline, you can hold that out of the way and you've got the working yarn is now attached to the darning needle, okay? You wanna go into this stitch, you're gonna keep the darning needle below the tips of the needles and you're gonna go into this stitch purlwise. And then you're gonna pull it through but you're gonna leave the stitch on the needle. We're gonna to go to the back stitch and go through that stitch knitwise. Again, staying underneath the tip of the needle, going into the stitch as though to knit it. So from the left side of the leg that's on the, the needle. And then you're gonna pull it through. Okay, and then you can give it a little bit of a snug. It doesn't have to be very tight. Now we're gonna do the second step, which of the, of going, of processing this stitch which is when we take it off. So we go into this stitch knitwise, and then we slide the first stitch off. Rotate your darning needle and go into the next stitch as though to purl. So I wanna do that underneath there. And then you're gonna pull the darning, the darning needle through and you finish the stitch. So I don't pull my darning needle and yarn through until I've gone through the second step. So that when I'm done, if I look up and away from my Kitchenering, I can tell which side I have completed and where I should go next. So if my yarn is coming out of the stitch that's on this needle in this direction, then I know that I've finished the front step. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the back step. So the back step starts with the purl and off, and then you go into the next stitch as though to knit and it stays on. Again, you're pulling the working yarn underneath and you can give it a little bit of a tug, not a tight tug. Then you come back to the front, in the front and off. So in the front knitwise and off and then rotate the tip of the needle don't pull the yarn through yet. Just rotate the tip of the needle, leaving it underneath the tips of the, of the knitting needle and pull the yarn through. Into the back stitch, purl wise and off, and then into the next back stitch, knit wise and leave it on. And each time I'm giving just a little bit of a snug to the stitch back to the front. So the, the steps are in the front, knitwise and off. I'm gonna make sure I'm under my lifeline there. And then into the next stitch, this one wasn't supposed to come off. 
pearl wise and it's going to stay on. So I'm going to just off on that one and then I'm going to go pearl wise into this one. And then I pull the needle through. And you can see that those are starting to be grafted on the back. So I'm going into the back stitch pearl wise because I think of that as being in the back. So when I start the repeat, I start the repeat with the pearl on the back stitches and then I go knit wise into the back stitch and leave it on, pull the yarn through. So if I stopped and I had to answer the telephone, the fact that my yarn's in the back means that I finished the back and I'm ready to do the, the, the front stitches. So I'm gonna go into the front stitch knit wise and off and then rotate the needle and go into the next one purl wise and leave it on. I keep my tip of my finger there. There is some little piece of hair knitted into my yarn here. I don't like it, there we go. I'd like to know what genius did this and I'd like to send a nasty note. <laughs> I think I just did something crazy there. Hang on. You're going to send them a nasty note? Yeah. Okay. That seems unfair. All right. And then this is the pearl wise and off knit wise and stay on. So I'm going to keep going. Knit off pearl wise, leave on. Pearl, off, knit wise, stay on. Knit, off, pearl, stay on. Pearl, Pearl. So I will say that the lifeline is making it a little bit tricksy, but I'm glad to have it because I, I have to pull this whole thing out for the other class. And then knit wise and you stay on. And I hope you can see that the top of my knitting looks like it's curving around. Knit, off, purl. Leaves it on. Pearl. And if you're having trouble, remember that the, the tips of your needles are tapered. So if you can work closer to the tip, there might be a little bit of extra room there. I sometimes will circle my needles around to get them into place. Knit, <laughs> off, Pearl, stay on, pearl, off, knit, stay on. So that you're just doing the same steps over and over again until you get to the last knit, off, pearl, stay on, pearl, pearl, off, knit, stay on. I think it's really important not to pull the yarn through. Um, so I'm gonna go into that knit wise. If I did, I wouldn't really know where, where I was in the steps. So I really try to take the yarn off carefully and not, and not finish the step all the way until I'm all the way at the end. Okay, pearl thing. Wouldn't it have been easier to make your lifeline like one row above it and you're not knitting right into it? Yes. Okay. It would have been. <laughs> you're so clever. I use pearl cotton and as I said I've had one it's not so much when I make socks for me it's when I make socks for someone else there's always going you know I find when I may have to make a pair for someone else there's always going to be an adjustment. 
Mm -hmm. I did not have my pearl cotton handy. Okay, so you get you to have to do the Kurtzner's. Why would you do a Kurtzner snitch, which is so hard, when you could just darn it together? You, well, it's the same. It's Create the same. a scene. It's the same steps. Okay, so when you get to the end and you've done all but two stitches, so I've done the first part of these two stitches, I've left them on the needles, but to finish them, you just do the finishing parts. And the finishing parts are knit wise and off and purl wise and off. And it, to me, it leaves a little bit of an ear. That's what they call that, the sock ear. But the way that I get rid of it is to take my darning needle and to insert it right where that ear is and pull until the ear goes into the fabric. And now it's gone. So that's the Kitchener with a lifeline. <laughs>